I, I, I haven't heard. Home. I never. I don't have a CD player. Uh, but this is a record I made in '86, and a guy put it on uh, on CDs. Some of my favorite versions of the song. <laughs> I love the Prisoner of Love on here. It's my favorite uh, version ever. Columbo. I love the Russ Colombo style in 1929. May you rest in peace. If Russ Colombo would have been alive, can I do a snip? Sure, a please. Oh, yeah. By all means. Now these are not imitations. I feel the spirit. Yeah. Rudy, when I met Bob Dylan in 1967, before I became a name, he knew of me through Lenny Bruce. Mm -hmm. That's in case I was close to Lenny Bruce. Yeah. He, to, he talked me up to his house in 1967, and he said, I said to him, you know, Mr. Dylan, you are today what Rudy Valley was in 1929. He said, Mr. Tim, tell me about Mr. Valley. I said, well, in the days when the microphone was there, no one knew how to use a microphone yet. You know, everyone says that the, that the talkies were hard for silent actors. The same with microphones were hard for, you know, for singers who sang in the Edison years. So, uh, Rudy Valley and Gene Austin, Gene Austin was the first in 1926 to put the microphone on the map when he, came, when he knew his voice was fit for it. In 1926, Gene Austin sounded something like this. When the wills call, and the evening is nigh, so I, think it's just, I, I, I worry to my blue heaven. A turn to the right, a little white light will lead you to my blue heaven. You'll see a smiling face, fireplace, a cozy room, a little nest that nestles where the roses bloom. Just Molly and me, and maybe makes three. We're happy in my blue heaven. Now that that, that, that was yeah, that time. Of like, that, but that time to hear a high voice like that on a microphone was a, was a shock of room. Gene Austin became the biggest name in radio from '26 till Valley came on. And I said, Mr. Dillon, when Mr. Valley came. The difference with Valley was he was the first singer ever in radio history and record history when Electric came to make the women swoon. The men did not really care for it, but that doesn't matter. It's women who buy records yes. most of the time. Uh, and uh, everything else. Uh, as Mr. Panera knows, because he swooned over him. What a great <laughs> voice he's got. And I can tell you, I really mean that. And the fact is that the Valley, in 1928, opened up in New York in a place called the High Ho Club, playing sure. his saxophone. He had to substitute for Will Osborne, uh, who was the singer there. And I, I think it was in June or October of 1928. And everyone, the, no one was in the club. He had a Monday through Saturday engagement. On Monday night, no one was there. The show was piped through WMC radio into Harlem. Mm -hmm. So in 1928, everyone sounded like this. Angela mia, you are my angel, dear. Valley? Oh, so, so, anyway, so then. I don't think they mind. I, I, I'll, I'll never mind. Anyway, so then, Valley came over the airwaves like this. Angela mia, you are my angel, dear. For heaven sent you down to me. This is Rudy Valley on the WMC radio announcing my new recording, Angela Mir. Now, when the women heard that voice, they swooned. <laughs> By the time Saturday came around, the place was packed with women. Yeah. 1929 of March, they roped off Times Square from 42nd to 44th at the Carmine Theater when Mr. Valley first appeared on the vaudeville stage. The movie was Jeannie Eagles. I, I can't remember the name of the movie, but uh, she was the star of the movie. And then they had a you know, vaudeville show. You couldn't get near Valley from 28 to 31. And I said, Mr. Dillon, here are some of the songs he made famous. I feel the spirit of Rudy Valley in 29. My father, my father, it's dancing time. The clock says 10. Won't you say when? Get ready, go steady, oh, let's begin. What time is right? 
I think we might just answer and answer away tonight. My time is your time. Your time is my time. We just need to synchronize and sympathize. We're harmonizing one step. And two step, old step, and new step. There's no time like our time, and no one like you. All alone I sit and dream of someone, someone that I'll hold as my ideal, hoping that someday I find that someone. Wondering what the future will reveal Oh, some girls are quickly forgotten And done with the dawn of the day But some you'll remember Like last glowing embers Haunting your memories and dreams For I'm just a vagabond lover in such of a sweetheart it seems And I know that someday I'll discover her The girl of my vagabond dreams and Dylan looked at me and I, as you know Mr. Dylan Also one of Mr. Valley's first big hit from his movie The Vagabond Lover in 1930 <laughs> made for two with nothing to mar our joy I would say such wonderful things to you there would be such wonderful things to do if you are the only girl in the world and I are the only and of course, Mr. Dill, I said to him, he also sang, Oh, Phil, the signs to dear old man, shout till the rafters ring. Stand and drink the toast once again, let every loyal main man sing. Then drink to all the happy hours, drink to the careless days. Drink to Maine or Alma Mater, the college of our hearts always. And Dill just look, and I say, no, Mr. Dill, supposing Mr. Valley, was here in your heyday today. Here's how we'd be doing your number. <laughs> how does it feel to be on your own? A complete unknown, like a rolling stone. And Mr. Nolan just looked, and I said, supposing you were there in his day, in 29, <laughs> here's, I think you'd be sounding with this number. My time is your time. Your time is my time. We just see to synchronize and sympathize. We're harmonizing one step and two step, old step and new step. There's no time like our time and no one like you. You know what he said? You want a banana? You, you want a banana before you go to bed? I said no. <laughs> I said, no value, I got my own fruits. But, but, but in 1931, 1931, something happened to radio, something happened to radio, and something happened to, to crooning. Because in my opinion, in my opinion, uh, the, the greatest crooning voice. Had an operation? Bing Crosby? Yeah, but before that operation, if he had one, I still don't know, I still don't know what happened to that voice. But in 1931, 
I have never heard a voice like the young Bing Crosby. I tell you, that was an unbelievable. Yeah. You know, in, Amos and I, at that time, at that time, Amos and Andy were the biggest comedy, the biggest comedy team in in radio. Mm -hmm. and the ratings of that show alone, whatever you compare TV today, Amos and Andy, number one, unbelievable. And the reason I bring this up is. Bing, well, you mentioned Paul White. Sandy with a Y, please. Is he on opposite them or something? Well, I tell you, at 28, 29, 30, no one could come near Amos and Andy. Bing Crosby came on the networks on W uh, CBS, CBS Radio in 1931 in October, sponsored by Cremo Cigars. This was the beginning of his. I'm glad Mr. Panera came back. I, I, I was stalling. Yeah, I brought a bitter. Oh, thank, I, oh, thanks a million. Oh, wow. oh, Mr. Panera, thanks. I wanted to bring the story in. I was stalling until he came back. There's a reason for this. In 19, there's the Crosby voice that the world is familiar with is this one. I'm dreaming. White Christmas. That's a little later. Yeah. Just like the ones I used to know. Now, however, in 1931, however, he came over the airwaves. That same song would have sounded like this. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Just like the ones I used to know. Where the treetops. Now, in 1931, Rudy Valley said in his book, he called Crosby a cold SOB. But he, said, but he said he knocked him out of the box. I had the thrill and the pleasure of doing the Hollywood Palace with Bing Crosby in 1968. Mm -hmm. and he was about 70, and he was amazed. He never forgot. Really? Shocked when I brought him his young voice. A little bit. A little bit. Some fans? Hi. Oh, thanks, thanks. Hi. Oh, hi, ladies. Hi, thanks. Well, this is uh, Mr. Bostrom. Hi, Mike. Yes. What, what was that? What was that? Excuse me? What's your last name again? Bostrom, that's right, yes. Mr. This is Mr. Bostrom. Mr. Yes, Panera. Okay. Yeah. 1931 over the radio. 1930, this voice came over. A mountain of sorrows now stands in my way. A mountain I foolishly made A wall between you and I A wall that seems to cry Too late A fool will always play with fate I learned to reach love's golden gate Too late, too late Love made I heard my heart cry for a maid I told my heart it had to wait until too late. I laughed at every love vow and paid the penalty. I used to laugh at love now. Love laughs at me too late. The Creole Cigar Hour presents The Bing Crosby Show because too late was his theme before it blew the night. Yeah. And then Crosby went on in 31 to sing songs like that. It was a lucky April shower It was the most convenient door I found a million dollar baby In a five and ten cent store Just one more chance To prove it's you alone I care for Each night I say a little prayer for Just one more chance Just one more night to taste the kisses that enchant me I'd want no others if you grant me Just one more chance I've learned the meaning of repentance Now you're the jury at my trial I know that I should serve my sentence Still I'm hoping all the while You'll give me mm, bum, bum, bee, dee, dee. 
I said that I was glad to start out. I did it out. Now I'm back to cry my heart out for just one more chance. Now, when he did his theme in 1931, why must I live in dreams of the days I used to know? Why can't I find real peace of mind and return? To the long ago, where the blue of the night meets the gold of the day, someone waits for me, and the gold of her hair crowns the blue of her eyes like a halo tenderly. If only I could see her, know how happy I would be. La da dee dee dee, la da da. Someone waits for me. Now that was 31. Thing I got that thing. Russ Colombo in 1931, the same year when Crosby was about 30. Mr. Colombo was about 24, 25, about 22, 23. In fact, I think I remember that something happened to him. His career He got was shot ruined. Yeah. accidentally in 34. At the age of 26 or 27, he would have been as big as Sinatra. Russ Colombo in 1934 had a 1940 voice way ahead of his time. He had this. Now I'm going to show you over WNBC. Colombo was opposite Bing Crosby. They called him the Romeo of song. It was not until the women saw him in a movie in 1933, where he played a gangster, that they realized this is the Russ Colombo they heard on radio. They never saw his picture. Now here's Russ Colombo doing the same number of Crosby's theme like this. Where the blue. Of the night meets the gold of the day. Someone waits for me, and the gold of her hair crowns the blue of her eyes like a halo tenderly. If only. Would see her. Oh, how happy I would be where the blue of the night meets the gold of the day. Someone waits for me. One waits for me. Someone waits for me. If only I could see her. Oh, how happy I would be. Where the blue. Of the night meets the goal of the day. Someone waits for me. Colombo, Russ Colombo, at that time had the greatest voice. I tell you, he not only did that. Rumors have it that Carol Lombard, Carol Lombard, was in love with him back in 1934, or she was doing a movie with Bing Crosby in Hollywood. Colombo came on the set, and there was rumors of a feud between Crosby and Colombo at that time. Uh, I, when you mentioned Prisoner of Love, I, I won't take your time. <laughs> you did the whole thing there, but uh, I, want, I want to ask you some questions yeah, about yeah, yourself I promise, too. I promise you, uh, but I just want to give two more songs. A, oh, a by snip all of means. This, just a snip of Russ Colombo wrote, wrote this song with Con Conrad in 1931. He, he wrote this great song. Alone from night to night, you'll find me. Too weak to break the chains that bind me. 
I need no shackles to remind me I'm just a prisoner of love. Now, I just want to say, those three singers, Crosby, Colombo, and Valley, from 29 with Valley to 34 on Colombo's death, from that period of time during the Depression, one of the most powerful singers of radio, records, and movies in the history of the electronic age. When Colombo died accidentally in California in September, I think the 2nd or 3rd of September of 1934, Bing Crosby was the pallbearer in New York where they had the funeral and made front page headlines in the Daily News. Now, ironically, a song was written for those three great giants. Yeah, oh, it's the next one. Chuck Negron. Yeah, thanks. There's a giant himself. Chuck, Chuck, Chuck. 1931, Chuck this song was written. Uh, th then we can answer all the questions you want, and thanks for your time. Oh, uh, sure. There are many public enemies, but I know only three. Crosby, Colombo, and Valley. They made a million married women wish that they were free. Crosby, Colombo, and Valley. Those crooning vagabonds are stealing all our blondes. Now I know what has become of Sally. And every time you turn your radio on, who you're gonna hear? Crosby, Colombo, and Valley. There are many public enemies, but I know only three. My time is your time. Crosby, Colombo, and Valley. <laughs> <laughs> so. They really wrote him then. They, what I'll three say. great giants? Those three giants. How many songs are you performing on this tour? Well, on this tour, just a short little yeah. snippet of a mistake. Shorter than what you just did now, probably. About ten minutes. Because mm -hmm. yeah. I, uh, let's see, I got some questions here I wanted to ask you. Type them up so I can read them. But I gotta get your name right. Yeah. Let me. Uh, uh, Bostrom, is it? Yeah. I, I will. Uh, so bad. I'm remembering the names. Not, in fact, I got uh, a couple of tapes for you because I'm in oh. a band myself. Oh, yeah, Mr. Panera was telling me about. Yeah, this. I believe you met some some colleagues of mine, uh, oh. Camper Van Beethoven. Do you remember them? You they oh, they back. What you a up. band that is! Like a they have was a that fiddle a Boston? Was that a Boston? Could have been. It in was east of here somewhere. Oh, yeah. I think. Uh, no, we're in Arizona now. Yeah. It was. So this is Mr. Donnie Brooks. Yes. Uh, Donnie Brooks. How are you? Derek Glassman. Right. My, my kids are out there. Want to say hello? Oh, right. uh, I heard from Mr. Mr. Panera. Told me this is a great group. Yeah, we're we're uh, we're pretty popular. We're getting there. We're starting to Boy. do some do some some work. And um, is this the same paradise that Columbo sang? No. Uh, oh. No. He also sang. Then she holds my hand. I know that she one. She takes me to paradise. Yeah, That's they've like, released this big, uh, this three CDs of Bing Crosby from 29 to 31. You mentioned all the Columbia, the Col really? before he moved to Decca, yeah. And that's all that stuff, the Paradise, the the Shine, with the, um, all, all kinds of songs. Away are bluesies, why don't that you one? shine? That's the one, yeah. <laughs> and uh, then there's like... Mills Brothers say that with it. Yeah, right, that's the version. And then there's like a, there's a, a Big Spiderbeck CD that's got all Paul Whiteman, Bing Crosby, and then a Paul Whiteman CD with Bing Crosby. Boy, so, and they all that period, one. 20... Tain so, honey, tain so, spoke to the Lord, the Lord said, no tain so, yeah. honey, you just tain so. Yeah, and Boy, it's... It's you took advantage of me voice. and uh, I'm so hot and bothered. Changes, and changes. Beautiful changes, dear harmony. That's the one. Dun, 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 dun. And uh, what else is on? Oh God, there's uh, when you're all alone. Any old that one? Yeah, oh, that was, oh, that's man. a good one. Uh, and then then there's one that's like that. Uh, get out and get under the moon. Get out and get under the moon. Is that the look, one? Look, yeah. look at <laughs> Helen Kane sang that first in 1929. May she rest in peace. Betty Boop took her voice, but Helen Kane was the first original Betty Boop sound Mississippi voice. Mississippi Mud? When the sun, I sang Mississippi <laughs> the other day. When the sun goes down, sang that one? Go down, people gather around and they all begin to shout, hey, hey, uncle. The, 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 the of course, they, the they had the racist version back then. Oh, I gotta watch that. Yeah, almost, you gotta be careful. Almost slipped in that show. <laughs> oh, uh -oh. The, I, Here's second. your fans again, by oh. the way. <laughs> Hi, Ivan, <laughs> ladies. <laughs> well, let me ask you some of these questions, or else we'll run till midnight. Oh, oh, great. oh sure. Who, who are the recent recipients of your beautiful women awards? If you're still giving them. Oh, I tell you, that is my darling, sweet wife, and I have parted already. 
I tell you, I married her in '84. I remember. She's, she, uh, Miss, that was the second one, Miss Jane. Yes, I remember oh. that one too. They they rep reported it in like the Inquirer or something like that. Oh, they wrote a lot of story that was. Yeah, there was an article about yeah. the marriage, and then like a couple weeks later, there's an article about the divorce. I mean, like no, no, well, we never divorced. We split about oh. five times, but right now it looks worse than ever because she doesn't tell me where she's working, and I got to find out where she's working. She's <laughs> 20 years younger than I am. I tell you, God bless her. But I tell you, she needs another man. But right now, as far as I'm concerned... She's the beautiful New Woman Award. Miss Jan? Oh, why? She'll always be a classic. I've been married to her. Same with Miss Vicky. But this year so far, I found a beautiful woman. It's not easy to find the type of woman I go for. I praise the Lord of nothing else. I thank you, Jesus, for the eyes. For the eyes to see beauty. In 19... I agree 19th, with that. Oh, praise the Lord, my friend. You're wonderful. 1947, Mr. Yeah. Bostrom, I saw Elizabeth Taylor. She was 15 years old. She threw me a kiss from the taxi cab. I'll never forget that 1947 September. I wrote her a poem then, gave it to her. She wrote me back. I met her at the St. Regis Hotel, September of 1947. She looked at me, threw me a kiss. I'll never forget that. I wrote her a poem. You came like a star that shines in the blue. You're like the roses sprinkled with dew. Eyes that gleam like glittering gold. And a heart that's neither harsh nor bold. You're all of nature by itself. Talent and beauty is your wealth. Like an angel from heaven, you're on the beam. I can't believe you're not a dream. So just be good and just be kind. And peace and happiness you will find. And sometimes when your thoughts are free, won't you kindly think of me? What a beautiful woman. So I tell you, for years gone by, I've been looking for that classic. This year so far, of all the women I've met, of all the women I've met, the most prettiest one that came close to me, the good Lord once a year lets me see someone, some angelic light, you know, short, perhaps, but a heaven. In, in Australia, this beautiful woman came up to me. She must have been about 19 years old. Right after the show, sat down on my knees like she was sent from heaven. I said, oh, what a dream. Her name was Miss Bronwyn. Oh, she said she'd meet me the next day. We'd be going on a boat ride. I gave her a kiss on the lips that night. Never saw her again. I tell you, <laughs> uh, sometimes they're pretty, oh, but uh, I said it got so desperate that, that two days later I put an ad out in the in the in the Australian paper, looking for her. I only had a week to go. She never came. What's gonna the whole the Sydney and all throughout Australia? We're looking for Miss Bronwyn. Where is she? I never <laughs> I never saw her again. And my heart broke. She as went I left to New back. Guinea, right? Oh, who knows where she went? But, but she never came well, back. Well, you know, yet. there's a correlation between the state of womanhood today and the state of the music business today. I don't care to go into that, but oh. if you, I think you might catch But Miss Brown was so far as the girl of the year. However, I can tell you, there's an angel in Texas who I met last year. Oh, maybe we'll see her one day in this trip. If not, what can I tell you? Miss Stephanie, wherever you are, she's 21. What a blonde, what a pretty one she is. But that's right, I've been giving trophies out for years, since 1963. Uh, giving at least 15 trophies out to beautiful angels I've met. Um... Let's see. Uh, okay, you mentioned that you worked with Lenny Bruce, and that's in the, an autobiography. Or a Sixty-six. Biography. Yeah, and he had a, a large. Oh, please. what's the hell? He had uh, apparently he had a huge collection of your tapes of recordings that you he had that's made. That's right. That's right. I'll tell you. I was about to uh, He had pleurisy in 1964, and I gave him some holy water, uh, and I don't know if he, he got for a minute he got well. Hmm. Now, in 1966, he continued his problem. Yeah, I don't want to stay well. Uh, he had a problem. He was the first of his time in his day to be daring. Yeah. The joke. Now they're all and doing. he was encouraged to do that, too, oh, by yeah. his fans and his people around him. And he had me on the bill when I was an unknown mm -hmm. back in 1964. He, he was a wonderful big, big man. Fan. Rest in peace. It said, Lenny Bruce plays for profit, and in small little words, Tiny Tim sings for love. Uh, the police closed the theater down in 64 of November in the yeah. Fillmore East Steven, at staging. that time. And then I saw him again in his house in 66 in Hollywood. While I was working as Mr. Donnie Brooks, the head of the show, producer star of the show. Mm -hmm. the anyway, so then at that particular time in 66, he wanted to hear a song. There was one, he was working through trials of court cases and yeah. papers trying to, to find a, a loophole for his case. Poor soul, rest in peace. But I sang him one song, if I may just do oh, this. Oh, please. That was sung. Oh, that was, tape. Uh, here's something a lot of people don't know. Oh, please say. That this song that was sung by Billy Murray 
uh, Irving Kaufman again in 1924, written by Abner Silver, who wrote that big song in 22. Yes, we have no bananas. Well, he wrote this song that Lenny Bruce always listened to as an inspiration when he fought his case. Rose is always welcome sunshine Even when the day is through And like a rose, well I suppose I welcome sunshine too Oh tell me when will the sun shine for me my life's a blunder, oft times I wonder When will the clouds say adieu And let the sun come shining through Tell me do, why do I frown When other people smile I'd like to smile all all the while Oh tell me, I'll ask the weatherman and see I'll ask him when will the sun shine for me. And he loved that song. Kind when will the sun shine for me? It's kind of like the. This is Tiny too, right? Mr. Tiny Rogers, a great man. Mr. Tiny Rogers, Derek Rossman, my... nice to meet you. Make sure that you glad he's done right on that stage. Yeah, they're hard to keep in tune too. I know, I got one. Um, speaking of ukulele, are you familiar with a guy named, uh, where is it, Peter Dean? Another ukulele no, player. Oh, he must be good. He was, uh, I think he's related to Carly Silent Simon, New York. Oh, really? Person. He played ukulele and played, I think that he put out records because of yours. And, you know, Rudy Valley put out a record because of yours. No, I didn't. Yeah, well, it, it's right around the same era. You you were imitated a lot. Richard Perry, the producer, he did an album with Ella Fitzgerald. He did an album right. with with the Theo Bikel and uh, I know what, well, I was working with him when yeah, he did that. Yeah, and they're all follow ups of your record. Well I think I, I didn't know that what, what did Rudy Valley do with the ukulele? I don't know if he just put out an album around the time of yours that really? was in the same sort of stuff. I always sort of thought that that your your albums the, the arrangements kind of sounded like Sgt. Pepper, you know that the Well that well Richard that was Curry pop, loved the Beatles. Yeah, and he copied all that stuff for your records. I didn't know that. So that's what it seems like. Well, I you're wanted probably to, right. I wanted to ask you about Richard Perry because he's uh, he he's now working for War for Warner's again. Yeah, what's the problem with him? He can't. Well, I guess he got involved in the infighting between the Pointer Sisters and their label, and decided he didn't like freelancing anymore. So now he's working back at Warner's as a staff producer again. Well, I'll but, tell you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. And well, I was just going to say he's. Uh, I guess uh, he got exasperated with the projects. And he says in that book that he he says that. He, like he stopped working with you at one point and went on working with. Uh, he did Ringo's album. That's like a imitation of Sgt. Pepper mixed with Tiny Tim styles. You know? <laughs> There's the one. Wonderful. Well, you're uh, definitely. Uh, you know. know but, but, but let me tell you something. Richard Perry got the only hit I ever had, and I will say that he was a genius in his right. But I will tell you this. He, no one yet. No one yet has ever had a hit record with me, period, yet alone a hit record of something that was original. Because with all the great things that Perry did, and believe me, he did, the only hit he had was Tip the Two of Tulips, which I did in, 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 in shows across the country. Yeah. And so, really... You'd been on TV before that anyway. So it was basically you getting the hit, not him. Well, but he did a good production, I'll say that. However... And I remember when I heard your record the first time, I was up on one of these streets here in Phoenix. I've lived here all my life. I remember I was like eight years old. Well, you can say this for fact. He's got to watch himself because this man is dying of drugs. That's probably... He looks terrible. And I'm not saying this with any animosity. I'm saying it as a friend. Oh, no. He can take it any way he wants. He, for a man to have everything like that, and I saw a picture of him when I did the Arsenio Hall show, the next day in the paper it came out. Yeah, I was in L.A. In fact, we probably saw the same. We were probably in town at the same time. Well, the thing is, it was he looked terrible. And he's got to get out of that. I just hope he saves his life. What they all need is Jesus Christ well, and his blessings. I personally agree with that. I'm in a, in a rock band. I'm in a young rock mm. band. And we've had our problems with drugs already. And we've mm. been in this band for nine years. And like I said, we're still not huge. We've gotten, pa but we've gotten past the drugs. You know, we've learned how, what you know, our values and stuff, and we're still sane. And you know, after nine years, that's saying a lot. You know, yeah. just to be in this business and still have your head, 
and be able to work is a lot because most people they take it and they just throw it all away. Yeah, but but, but well, Richard Perry, he could have been. I don't know what his problem with the points is. Well, he got him all these hits, slow handed. He got oh. a hit with with Julia Iglesias. Yeah. Oh, he did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For all the girls I've loved. Well, that's him. Well, he's certainly oh, no, no. a, a nice style, but. Uh, oh. I wanted to ask you also about him. Um, there's some songs on your albums that don't sound like they come from your repertory, like The Other Side, for instance, in which you... That was Perry's, that yeah. was Perry's idea. That was, that's a funny song. You're on there going, yeah, hooray, the ice caps are melting. That, that was a prophetic song. They say they are really melting now. Oh, uh, well, I think that that's a prophetic song because it could be a hit again. And Boy. Then, and then there's um, Strawberry Tea, obviously, Psychedelic. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. And then there's Satisfied with Life. Is that an old song? That was, sure is an old song. It was written by George M. Cohan. This guy, this, these gals want your autograph. Yeah. Oh, my holy <laughs> Jesus. Oh, my. Ladies, I see this Oh, paper. this is Mr. Bostrom here. One of Hi. The great, Hi. Hi. What is the name? Sandy. Okay. Mm. I hope they like me tonight, I tell you. Oh, they will. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't know. I will. What's the name? Janelle. Jeanette? Janelle. Oh, thanks. That's my only piece of paper. Oh, this is the only one on this side. Uh, we got Mike Panera here. Okay. Uh, uh, Thank you. Yeah, tell me how to write over this. <laughs> you don't want to write over That's somebody else's. J uh, J A N E L. J E N. J E N. Tell you as soon as I get paid tomorrow, I have got to go and get some good toothbrushes. <laughs> oh, that's. Uh, Thank you very much. My pleasure, much. ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. Out there. My pleasure. You know, I played here in 1968, the first play. Um, yeah. Speaking of toothbrushes, you want to sign some of my I stuff sure while uh, while you're sitting yeah. here? I take the plastic sure. out of there. This is a, this is the only copy of these. These are the only copies of those records I've ever seen. And uh, well, they're around, but you're gonna pay some money for them. Yeah, I don't oh, usually. I usually just go for the. You see, that's orange. I got a black one. I tell you, you know what song I like on this one? I'll tell you which one I like. Tell me. I like the Lonesome Little Rain. God bless you, my friend. See, is that you the one can't you... fool no one. That's a good. That's a good song, and it's you know. Sung by Sam Ash, 1920. Uh, uh, written by Vincent Romo. It's about the best sounding cut on there. A lot of them sound like they wanted to get you out of there as quick as possible. Yeah. I wasn't even there. Yeah. A lot of That's them. right. How All right. So? Nilsson did an album of, of Tiny Tim imitations. It was very nice. Was did you nice. know that, right? He did, with Gordon Jenkins. Yeah, the he did a version of. He did a version of. Uh, That's all I ask. Of, of all I ask, and they said that your version is the best, and I Jenk agree. Jenkins didn't say nothing. <laughs> Look, well, I think that your version is by far the best. Yeah, I, I, so I give Artie Butler credit there. Artie Butler was the one who suggested that song. Artie Butler was a great arranger, and he. Uh, well, you remember Indian Reservation, that song he arranged for, for the Raiders. Unbelievable, plus many other great things. Yeah. But he was—he deserves the credit for that. But uh, but that one you mentioned um, is all I ask. And it was all right. I mean, it's, it's just it, see, I've been recording other people's things because I, I love to record, and I know that you know maybe I'll get lucky you know on somebody else's material. But one day, if I still have the voice and still have the health. I will record these great old songs. I was going to ask you. Oh. Uh, you should you should definitely do an album of, you know, the greats. I have to go. I can't do an album. I've got to do one at a time because oh, yeah. I don't want I don't want an album. I want every song to be there. Oh, yeah. The way I hear it. Exactly. Maybe, you you know, start recording and then say after a couple of years you pick the best or whatever and then you have a, a bumper crop or something. Well, I'd like to record an album the best of Ross Columbia. Oh, I think hey, one day I might do that. But uh, anyway, then I had my own record label. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm losing track. In 1972, there was a Mexican singer called Juan Gabriel. I don't know if you heard of him, but he had a number one hit in, at the time. Nilsson had his called No Tango De Nero. On the Toilet record label, I got the master track that Juan Gabriel recorded, and I sang on his track on that record. I. I, you know, I just translated the Spanish words. So I put my own words. Girl, I ain't got no money. I ain't got no dough. My pockets are empty. The wallet is low. The temperature's high, but the wallet is low. I ain't got no money. I ain't got no dough. 
and I recorded that on the Tormid record label, and, you know, and I recorded, I had another label called Victim. Victim like Vic, Records. Yeah, with Vicky and myself, a little cameo, Victim, I'm sure. a little cameo on with her and myself. And that's in 1970. I recorded uh, for the Victim label under the name of Grandpa Tim, <laughs> a song called My Way. And I wish I had a copy of that, yeah. because that was the best version. I redid it years later. Is that your favorite rec recording that you've done? Oh, that no, you released? It's my favorite personal recording. I did a 1970, just my own money, I spent about maybe $500. The piano player Marvin Lewis was playing. I, I, the only one I know I said, uh, who made the copies, must have been about 200 copies of no. each, I recorded in this voice. And now <laughs> the end is near, and do I face the final curtain? My friends, I'll say it clear. It was about an old man starting out doing things his way. And then it went on to say, It's uh, never too and late. Then, and I went on, I saw the Wright brothers, and I saw World War I, and I saw World War II, and I, then finally I saw them plant a flag on the moon, an American flag on the moon, and I still did things my way. <laughs> what is a man? What has he got? If not himself, then he has not. And it goes on and on and on. <laughs> you know, and I recorded that song on the Grandpa Tim for the victim label, I also recorded the Paul, uh, what's his name, Tom Jones, did a song called Delilah. Sure. I saw the night of the light, I passed by her window. I saw the flickering shadows of love on the blind. She was my woman. <laughs> it's about an old man looking at this lovely woman. <laughs> and I used the Byron G. Harlan voice. Byron G. Harlan was Thomas Edison's favorite singer in 1902. And I used his voice on modern day songs of the 70s on the victim label. If they've got, got a record of something like that, that, Rhino puts out records like that. They haven't got these. No. These are my own collection. I made special. Only a few people may have that. Maybe Marvin Lewis, my conductor, might have a couple of victims. But that is Mr. Noda here, musical director of the show. Hi. Yeah, well, you know. Good to see you. Great songs in those years. And I can just close this. No, we can. Uh, you can get ready for the show. Yeah. Again, ready, huh? But Rudy Valley sang a song. In, I don't know if you can let it hear anymore. Rudy Valley sang a song in 1933. When he was on the way, you know, down and yeah. But he's still there, he's still hot. His big years were 28 to 31. But in 1933, he sang a song from a, mo a movie with W.C. Fields called International House. International House. Yeah, sure. It's strange. It was 33, but the words are still good for today. Did you know it was Rudy Valley who first sang As Time Goes By in 1931? Uh, and then, as time goes no. by, it became a hit in the 40s with, with Casablanca. Casablanca. Yeah. But Rudy Valley oh. first sang it ahead of his time. I didn't know that. And, uh, and but I just want, I know you're in a hurry, but I just want to do this. Oh, no, I'm not in a hurry. Okay. His songs, thanks Mr. Bosman, his songs, this song here kept it moving. I don't know to what psychosis we ascribe each diagnosis or what sort of ailments we deduce. Just as long as songs can cure all, then allow me to assure all pills and drugs have now outlived their use. No matter what the case is or its urgency, be prepared with this for each emergency. I'll keep a little song handy wherever you go, and nothing can ever go wrong. Keep a little song handy, and sure as you know, sunshine will follow along. Any little single jingle that sets the toes a tingle will help you when you mingle in any single throng. So keep a little song handy wherever you go, and nothing can ever go wrong. In 1930, the verse to this song. This day and age we're living in gives cause for apprehension with speed and new invention and things like third dimension. Yet we get a trifle weary with Mr. Einstein's theory, so we must get down to earth at times, relax, relieve the tension. And